Hello everyone, hope you're fit and well. It's Stephen Clark and friends back with another news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. So good morning, good afternoon and good evening, no matter where you are in the world. Hope you're all safe from that CCP virus going around lately. Thailand, what's the proper punishment for those convicted of rape on very young girls? Some Thai officials say prison time is not enough and are pushing for chemical castration of convicted offenders. Bangkok, survivors of the deadly army crackdown in Thailand that killed more than 90 people were to observe a 10 year anniversary at home due to the Chinese coronavirus. But we'll look back on those dark days. A blast from the past, ex-US President Obama and Anthony Bardane enjoy dinner and a beer in Hanoi. A restaurant in Vietnam was so honoured by the visit, they framed the table and stool. Thai Prime Minister Priyat Achenata has announced Thai Airways to file for bankruptcy. It was the best course to help the troubled airline back onto its feet under a rehabilitation plan. Okay, let's take a look. A push for chemical castration punishment for ties convicted of sex offences. What is the proper punishment for those convicted of rape? Some Thai officials say present time is not enough and are pushing for chemical castration of convicted offenders. The House Committee tackles the country's rape problem made more calls for chemical castration laws. The issue of sexual abuse involving students and teachers still persist, committee members said. Schoolgirls have faced many types of violence, from rape to molestation. This becomes a public concern and it has to be resolved right away. Just last week, five teachers were accused of gang raping a 14-year-old student in Makadan, adjacent to the Lao border. All of the suspects denied allegations and were released on bail. Two days later, a 16-year-old girl came forward also claiming that she had been sexually assaulted and collaborated the evidence and identified all the alleged suspects. A committee member and criminology expert suggested Thailand have a sex offenders registry, as well as employment bans for convicted sex offenders. I don't feel that Thai nationals should be the only people committing sex offenses that are castrated. All nationalities should be castrated and maybe sent back to their own country without their testicles, or perhaps even not sent back at all and disappear. Yes, Stephen. Not the kind of story you want to do. You know, we, we f don't talk about this subject, but with the rape of the 14 and 16 year old girls by teachers and alumni, the ones that are supposed to guide them, help them with their education, people to look up to, safety if it's needed, that trust has been taken right away. But along with that one, Kelsan, a police officer was drunk and decided to lock up and molest a 15 year old girl. But when it comes to disgusting, a three year old girl found naked and dead in a forest in Mukdaharam. Upon finding the body and preliminary tests suggested that the child had been sexually abused. Collection of further blood tissues and fluid samples, etc. will take 30 days and a full investigation is underway. Chemical castration. I think they should bring out a rusty knife. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Every country has got their rules and if you commit a crime in a country, then you face the penalty. I think the world should push for a worldwide registry of sex offenders. It's not only Thailand, it's not only Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, some of these crimes are worldwide. It happens worldwide. And it's about time the world actually stood up and I praise Thailand for that. And yeah, I'd certainly volunteer to do the operation for them, not a problem. They deserve everything they get. Johnny out. Colin marks 10 years since the deadly armed crackdown. Bangkok. Survivors of the Delhi Army crackdown in Thailand that killed more than 90 people were to observe the 10-year anniversary, mostly in private, on Tuesday. 
amid a state of emergency prompted by the coronavirus pandemic. The 2010 crackdown was a watershed moment in Thailand's polarised politics that pitted the Royal Military Establishment against the Red Shirt Movement of mostly rural and working class supporters of the former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra. Thaksin supporters staged months of at times violent street protests in Bangkok in protest against the court ruling that dissolved the Tuxin Allied Party that had won elections in 2008. Those elections restored democracy two years after the army staged a coup to remove Tuxin. The standoff ended in a military operation that drove the red shirts from Bangkok's prominent business and tourism district, killing more than 90 people, mostly civilians and wounded hundreds. Each year, survivors and relatives hold commemorations, but this year events are expected to be subdued. We cannot yet organise a large-scale gathering to mark the anniversary because of the coronavirus. But relatives of those who died will mark the occasion in various places. A chairwoman for the United Fund for Democracy Against Dictatorship, the former name of the Red Shirts. She said she was not hopeful for justice under the current government, led by former Army Chief Priyat Chinacha who in 2014 overthrew a democratically elected government that had been led by Tuxin's sister, Yinglok Shinawatra. Priyat's pro-army party won elections last year that critics denounced as being manipulated by election relations and court ruling. The many people in power today are figures involved in the conflict 10 years ago. They and the conservationist groups are holding on to power. Priyat and the court have denied accusations of manipulating the election results. This year's commemoration of the 2010 crackdown was, was joined by the Youth Orientated Progressive Movement, which staged a light show last week calling for the investigation into the decade old deaths. Priyat declined to directly comment when asked by reporters about the light show, saying the country needs to unify to fight the Chinese coronavirus. The recovery for our country after this period requires cooperation from all sides. Do not move on other things to create confusion and disorder. Major General Priyat Chinacha stated. <laughs> Ex-US President Obama and Anthony Bardone enjoy a dinner and a beer in Hanoi. This restaurant in Vietnam was so honoured by the visit that they framed the table and the stools. Watching that episode, Obama was so down to earth. Anthony Bardone added so much to the way food and specialising over food is important in so many cultures. Unfortunately, Anthony is no longer with us. I wonder if he ever knew how appreciated he was. All that separates the leader of the free world and the celebrity chef turned writer turned TV host is a spread of local Vietnamese cuisine and some chopsticks and two open bottles of local beer. No glasses required, of course. The fellow diners are trying to act natural, but believe me, they were struggling to contain their excitement. And of course, the significance wasn't lost on the restaurant. The owners of Ba Cha Hong decided to put the metal table and the plastic chairs on the second floor and encase them in glass for all to see. Thai Prime Minister Priyat Chinacha has announced that the Cabinet will approve the proposal for the Ministry of Transport that Thai Airways can file for bankruptcy at the Central Bankruptcy Court in order to be rehabilitated under the Bankruptcy Act. It was the best course to help the troubled airline back onto its feet. Thai Airways will not receive financial assistance from the government and its 20,000 staff will not be laid off. It was a difficult decision, but it's in the national and public interest. With professional management, it will regain its strength and it will be restructured. The Thai court will decide the details. Thai Airways acting president said the airline will not go bankrupt, but will carry out its rehabilitation plan effectively, pending the rehabilitation process. Thai Airways will continue with its normal services. Thai Airways assets are estimated to be at 256 billion baht as of the end of last year, while the total debt stands at 245 billion baht, according to the Stock Exchange of Thailand. 
In 2018, the Thai Airways International recorded a net loss of 11.6 billion baht, and in 2019, 12 billion baht. The airline is forecast to lose 18 billion baht in the first half of this year, partly due to the impact of international CCP virus outbreak crisis. So as you can imagine from those figures, Thai Airlines was losing money before the virus arrived, badly. So the failure of Thai Airlines cannot be solely blamed on the virus. But admittedly, it has not helped them. 